welcome back to Advent Calendar Festival. It is day 12 and we will be talking about our first first year Aqua member. It is going to be the Fallen Angel Yoshiko or as her fans call her Yohane. And uh, for the most part, I think her cards are on the average side. She's got one or two really good ones. Um, but her SSRs, I would say, are kind of above average. So, like, more interestingly, the SSRs of the point of interest for her cards, and the URs are just kind of there, but uh, we will go over each one of them individually. And before we do that, uh, we do have to talk about the limited UR Yoshiko that came out two months ago with the other first years that have those really weird, unique skills, and for the most part, those skills are kind of gimmicky and bad. But um, I do want to explain why they're kind of gimmicky and bad. So uh, let's see, this Yoshiko Blu-ray Art Limited card has what's called a skill boost. And what it does is for every 32 notes, there's a percentage chance to increase the activation chances of all your other skills by a certain percentage for a certain amount of seconds. Now, that's quite a mouthful. So, um, hopefully these graphics on the screen are indicative enough of what it actually does. So, at skill level 1, there's a 22% chance to increase all your other cards' skills' probabilities by 10% for 4.5 seconds. And at skill level 8, there's a 43% chance to raise the skill activation chance of all your other skills by 24% for 8 seconds. So. That's quite a tongue twister, and it's really hard to explain why this is bad without using a whole bunch of math, but I'll try to do my best. So, uh, first thing to note is that this skill takes a very large note requirement before actually activating. It's every 32 notes, so it's unprecedented to have a card that takes so long before it actually activates. For the most part, we're used to cards that activate with like... Um, anywhere between 15 to 28 kind of notes. So having a card that doesn't activate for 32 notes is rather insane. And the skill itself doesn't actually provide you with any kind of benefit. It provides you with benefit for the other cards. So the only way this card can actually give you an, a theoretical increase in score is if this skill's activation results in at least two other cards um, their skills have to activate and we also have to assume the scenario in which that without this Yoshiko skill activating those two other cards would also not activate and again this is quite a difficult concept to explain but hopefully this example will put things into perspective so here I have this fruit umi that we've looked at a few days ago and I picked this fruit ubi because I was looking for a card that would activate at 34 notes and no card actually does that for the first activation so we have to divide by two and then that's 17 so this fruit umi will activate every 17 notes and its second chance of activation will occur at 34 notes and the whole reason we want it to be 34 is because that's the next number in which any skill can actually activate. Uh, there's no skills that activate with 33 notes, so we have to pick a skill that activates at a much lower requirement and then multiply that number by 2. And this Fruit Umi pretty much fit the bill because it was also a cool member, It was a, it's a, also a score up card. It's just unfortunate that it's not like a, a first year member, but we'll kind of neglect that fact. We're just kind of looking at the skill at this point. And this fruit only has, at skill level 1, a 33 or a 30, a 31% chance to activate and it'll provide 505 points if it does activate. And the problem here already is that this fruit umi already has 31% chance of activation. So uh, what this Yoshiko does is it'll add 10% more to that and again I'm not really sure the mechanics of this, it will either be additive, so it'll be 31 plus 10 to equal 41%, um, and that will be the good case scenario, 
And the bad case scenario would be it's multiplicative, so then it would be 31 multiplied by 1.1, and then that would be like 34% around, and that would be actually terrible for this card. So I'm just gonna assume the, the much more optimistic scenario where it's an additive percentage, so then this Umi becomes 41% uh, instead of 31%. So the whole problem with this type of um, skill is that it's the same thing with the Encore skill that we looked at earlier uh, with the promo or the limited Ellie card and also the limited uh, Yo card is that why would you rather use this when you could just use another copy of a card that's more easily accessible? Because for this card to actually contribute more than the cards you're helping, it has to enable at least two other of those cards to actually activate their skill. And the numbers for this, again, are really, really iffy. So I can't really explain it to you without doing like a half an hour video of complex mathematics. <laughs> um, so all you really need to know is that because this card is so hard to obtain and it's a UR card, so you can't even justify um, skilling up this card skill as opposed to just skilling up the other UR score cards because those ones will just give you a more immediate benefit. This Yoshiko is just kind of a wild card and for the most part, I, I can't see any kind of scenario in which a theoretical best team would utilize this card since a theoretical best team would assume that all the skills activate anyway. It, this is the kind of card that is kind of like um, hedging your bets, if that makes sense. It's You're trying to make your other eight cards activate more often, whereas you could just have a ninth card in place of this Yoshiko, and on average, the ninth card uh, would activate more often then this card activates, and also, as a result of this card activating, help your eight other cards activating more. And that's pretty much it for this card. Again, if all of this was confusing, um, don't worry about it. All you really need to know is that this is a gimmicky card that probably won't um, be beneficial for anyone's team. So, let's talk about Yoshiko's real cards now. And first off, we have this... Halloween one and it's perfect lock so that's pretty much why it's on the bottom here it's also a generic 7% 1% center skill so not too useful uh, in terms of team building at all uh, the perfect lock skill is pretty okay it's every 23 notes you get some perfect lock chance and you get that 50% um, coin flip threshold at skill level 5 so uh, it's not bad, if you get dupes of it, then you can feed them to each other and you would have a very strong perfect lock card at your disposal. Next off is this uh, initial Yoshiko, and initial Yoshiko is a healer. Her center skill is 7-2 for Guilty Kiss. Um, Guilty Kiss is uh, not the best kind of subunit to build towards because um, it has the Lily White problem where all the unit members are of, of a different year group, so it becomes extremely hard to actually scout for them aside from the Guilty Kiss box since you can't double dip in the year box either. Uh, the, the skill itself is every 23 notes, you get some HP recovery, and honestly, an SSR healer that gets around close to 150 of absolute value at skill level 8 is on the average to above average side. We've seen a bit of outliers where um, their absolute values for healers are like kind of ridiculous, like the Haragi Riko or the initial Yo SSR. Uh, but this one is just kind of average. It's, it's not bad, but it's not too good either. Uh, next off, we have this Circus Yoshiko, the first of her three score cards. And Circus Yoshiko is a 7%, 2% for first year members, so a slightly better center skill than the previous one we looked at. And the skill itself, every 24 notes. You get some score increase, and the skill itself is rather pitiful because compared to the healer initial Yoshiko we looked at um, just now, uh, it only differs in the absolute value at skill level 8 by 1, and you would expect that a scorecard would 
outperform a healer card for the most part, this one is just rather disappointing. Now, I can't really say that for the other two of Yoshiko's scorecards, which are actually really good, so let's take a look at those. And the uh, first off we have here is the Swimsuit Yoshiko, and it's a 7%, 2% for first year members, so it's a pretty okay center skill. If you don't have any kind of pure 9-6, you can always use this 7-2. Uh, and the skill is every 19 notes, you get some score increase, and the numbers are very, very impressive, especially for an SSR card. So at skill level 8, you get um, 180 for the absolute value, and you also achieve that coin flip threshold, but again, it's not really advisable to skill up your SSRs too high since the skill experience would be much better off on your UR cards eventually anyway. If you do get dupes of SSRs, then it's probably worth skilling them up rather than like using them to idolize to get more slots. Uh, but this skill overall, pretty strong, especially for an SSR card. And finally, our uh, last SSR for Yoshiko is this Christmas Yoshiko that you've seen at the beginning of the video. And again, it's rather strong. It's 7-2 uh, for Smile first year members. And the skill is perfect gated, so you could argue that the previous one is better since it takes less effort to actually activate that skill, but this this Yoshiko's numbers are slightly better, so I do rank it um, one position higher than the previous one. So every 25 perfects, you get some score increase, and at skill level 8, you get that 182 absolute value. Uh, the coin flip threshold is reached at skill level 6, so that it does have that going for it over the other one. But uh, yeah, those two SSR Yoshikos are rather strong. Um, if you don't have uh, like a full team of URs to put on your teams, then um, they're definitely good candidates to put, uh, especially if you do invest in that fourth slot and then skill them up a little bit. And you can put a charm on it, but I would only recommend using a charm uh, if you do get the SSR um, to at least skill level 4. And the kind of like rule of thumb to use is that the point in which a charm is actually better than a veil um, for the most part is when this end value um, on this table reaches over 1000. So you can see on this Yoshiko at skill level 4 the end value is 1,105, so mathematically, it will be better to use a charm than a veil. Whereas at skill level 1 through 3, uh, those numbers are less than 1,000, so um, you, would much be, you would much rather use a veil in that case. So, now that we talked about the SSRs, uh, we can take a quick look at the URs, and it is going to be a rather quick look because none of Yoshiko's URs are very outstanding in my opinion. There's a lot better cards out there for team building. Um, but if you do have them, then uh, they're a welcome addition to any kind of team. So first off is the worst uh, because it is a perfect lock. It's the Halloween Yoshiko. She has a 9%, 3% center skill. So nothing too valuable since you can get much better center skills these days. And it's every 19 notes you get some perfect lock chance. So uh, at skill level 6, you do get that um, over 50% coin flip threshold. But I don't really recommend skilling up a perfect lock card in general, so uh, it's more or less kind of like a box cheerleader in my opinion. But but it is a very nice looking card, so it does have that going for it. So on to our top three. The bronze medal has to go to this uh, Valentine's Yoshiko. It's a 9%, 6% for first year members, so it's actually a very strong center skill. It's unfortunate that it is a healer card though, so... Every 22 notes, you get some HP recovery, and we've seen a card like this uh, a little bit earlier when we looked at uh, Pajama Party Rin. So compared to Pajama Party Rin, this card is slightly worse in terms of the uh, values for its skill, but they're kind of comparable and interchangeable for the most part for any kind of first year smiles team. You can use either of them as a pretty strong center card if you don't have access to anything better. Second place will go to this Summer Beach Yoshiko, and uh, this is the first of her two score cards. It's a 9%, 6% for Guilty Kiss, so unfortunately not too good of a center skill, since Guilty Kiss is probably the hardest subunit for Aqua to build towards. And the skill is combo based, so every 21 combo you get some score increase. Uh, you actually get to that 50% coin flip threshold rather early at skill level 5, so it does have that kind of 
benefit going for it. And at skill level 8, it does reach um, above 300 absolute value and very close to 200 average value at 199. So overall, a very strong, well-rounded card uh, for any kind of um, first-year cool team or even the first-year Guilty Kiss team if you happen to be building one of those. And then our first place goes to this jellyfish animal, Yoshiko. And it's pretty obvious why I picked this one. It's the 9%, 6% for the first year members. So for Aqua, this is probably the best first year center skill. Uh, for Muse, there's a much better one overall uh, than this uh, Yoshiko. But if you don't have that one, then this is probably the best next best thing. And the skill is perfect gated. So every 26 perfects, there's some chance for score increase. But aside, uh, like putting the perfect uh, skill requirement aside, the numbers are quite impressive. The average at skill level 8 does reach 200, and the absolute value does reach a nice 313. It's rather unfortunate though that uh, the av absolute value is so low, um, just because it is a perfect gated card, and that's just another uh, instance of K-Lab, you don't know how to balance your game out of, your, out of a paper bag, so uh, overall, pretty good card. Um, there are better options out there for pure uh, center skills and pure cards in general, but it's definitely on the, the upper echelons of uh, scorecards compared to like a lot of the lower tier ones. So that's pretty much it for Yoshiko or Yohane if you want to call her that. So tell me about the Fallen Angel. What kind of Yoshiko cards do you have and what kind of Yoshiko cards are you hoping to get? Moro will be looking at another member of Muse, so do look forward to that. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Clash my Oh, God, what?